Hi everyone. It's been a long time, but I I think I want to just kind of record a random video um, just to talk about whatever and just so I can get into the habit of, um, of posting videos again. So anyway, um, as you can see, I've gotten a lot of more gray hair since the last time. <laughs> and actually right now, it's not looking that great. Oh, it's looking really bad. Um, but that's because I haven't taken it out. I, this is how I slept in my hair. I've been using the new, um, Motions, uh, heat styling line to test it out. And so eventually I'll put a review on that. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about, which a lot of people are talking about, is the, um, the verdict with Trayvon Martin. And I actually posted a blog, um, I made a blog post about it and it is in my, in the comments. <sighs> but, um, I happened to find this picture and, um, uh, it was a, um, woman holding up a sign at a rally and it said, please don't kill our sons and had two sad faces. And I posted it on my Instagram. And so then I got these two responses, um, from people I didn't know, uh, one said, then please don't uh, assault our neighborhood watch volunteers. And um, another one said something similar. And so I kind of debated with them. Um, but the end result to me was, regardless of if Trayvon started the fight with George, George did follow him and he shouldn't have and he knew that. And if somebody is... Uh, coming up to me and it's late at night and I'm walking in my own neighborhood um I might end up in a fight with them because that's crazy some stranger is coming up to me and and yelling at me and acting crazy I'm not going to just be okay with that and um my argument in some of those comments was that well maybe he should have shot him in the leg then um because he sure didn't, Trayvon did not deserve to lose his life over this mess. He could, if he assaulted George, like these people are saying, if he assaulted George first, then maybe he deserved to uh, get arrested or spend a little time in jail. But did he really deserve to lose his life? Did his parents really deserve to have to grieve over their son? How much sense does that make? because he's walking in his own neighborhood at night and looks suspicious. It's just foolishness to me because you know what? That wouldn't have happened to a young white teenager. He wouldn't have been, um, in my opinion, he, he wouldn't have looked suspicious to Zimmerman and Zimmerman would have followed him, possibly watching him until he got to his door and then left him alone. He wouldn't have confronted him like that. But whatever, I wrote about it in my blog, so please, please read for, um, and let me know what you think. I, people just don't seem to understand, uh, certain people don't seem to understand, um, what uh, others have to go through. You know, I've noticed that there's a, it seems like there's more a sense of entitlement, among um, a lot of white people and and I'm not saying oh I hate white people or anything like this um, but I know that there are things that they feel like um, they deserve or um, just because just because they're human or whatever well if you deserve that just because you're human then I deserve that too and my sons deserve to be able to walk down the street so my daughter just walked in the door without knocking again anyway my sons deserve to walk down the street wearing a hoodie without someone stopping them and saying and, and thinking that they look suspicious that's all there is to it um, I have two sons and I kind of struggle now on, you know, what I should tell them. I mean, I said in my blog, you know, do I tell them to, um, 
when they go out now make sure you don't wear a hoodie and um, put on put on some white face makeup and um, put on a Justin Bieber wig or some straight haired wig so that when you're walking down the street people will think you're white and then they might not stop you is is that what we need to tell our sons I mean I I'm, I'm really struggling with that because, you know, after the verdict came in, my 13-year-old son was pretty upset. And he, um, I mean, my husband had to explain to him that, you know, justice is different for us than it is for uh, other people, m- mostly white people. Um, and this is not, you know, I'm not trying to offend any white people with this. Um, but it is a fact, you know, I remember one time, uh, I was going to a tennis match on, uh, the other side of town and there was a bunch of us girls driving, you know, we, we took, we didn't have the bus taking us. So we girls drove in and, you know, we kind of carpooled. And so this guy, um, had cut us off and then he was kind of swerving around I think he came from behind and then cut us off in front of us or whatever I don't remember exactly how it ended I mean how it started that he cut us off but anyway so um then he started driving really slow and so the driver was kind of um I don't know I don't remember if she honked or what or she was just following closely behind him because he was going like 10 miles under the speed limit and finally he came to a stop and he looked out he he poked his head out the car he had a mullet and no shirt on just fyi but he said um i'll pop a cap in your nigger ass we're 16 17 years old (laughs) what kind of mess is that to say and he was in the car with a woman and had a child or two in the back and it, it looked like it was, you know, a family traveling. What, first of all, what reason did he have to say that? I mean, you know, whatever she was, she was not harassing him. Um, he just, he started all of this. And it's like, it's like he just happened to see that we were black and decided to um, mess with us, I guess. And, um, and then, you know, and then threaten us. I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm in high school. I'm a teenager. I might have even been 15 at the time. And I have to be told that someone's going to pop a cap in my nigger ass while I am um, on my way to a tennis match? What kind of crap is that? And, you know, just other random stuff. I mean, that wasn't really my first real experience with racism but I mean there's been other things since then and I mean you know and there's been other more subtle things like um (laughs) an ex of my husband said that uh he was moving from the suburbs to section eight and she was white and that was a reference to me well (laughs) to me that's racist I don't care what anyone says, you know, and actually, for the record, I've never lived in Section 8. Nothing's wrong with that, but I never had to. So for her to even say that and make that assumption, if I had been white, would she have said the same thing? I doubt it. I had a job um, where I was training an older woman, and um, she actually, you know, she had, like, lost a job. She had... I was kind of in an entry-level job, and she had had a degree and all that stuff. So she kind of was, um, you know, this wasn't a typical position for her. This was just something, um, like, for the meantime, I suppose. So anyway, um, you know, I'm training her and and then explaining things to her. And then she's just commenting on um, how how well-spoken I am. And then she's like, oh, um, did you grow up around here? And I said, yeah. And she's like, oh, what, what school did you go to? And I told her, um, I mean, she's, no, actually she asked me, did I go to public school? And I, I just kind of laughed and I said, yes. Um, and she was so surprised. And if I was white, would she have been surprised that I had gone to public school? I don't think so. If, if, if I were white, 
and I had said, oh yeah, I'm, I went to this school, whatever, whatever. And then she would probably be like, okay. But even, even if I hadn't even, if I were white, the subject of what school I went to would not have come up because it would not have been a surprise that I was well-spoken, that I, that I spoke properly or whatever. I mean, it's stuff like that. It's like, come on, you know, we are intelligent too. Now there may, in the media, um, there may be negative portrayals of us, but um, overall, we're not dumb. You know, we're, we have minds, we have brains. Our brains are human brains. They're not monkey brains or anything like that. So, I mean, you know, it's, why is it such a surprise when we can do um, the same things that white people can do? Or um, when we are successful, why is it, why is that? Oh, that's awesome. That's great that they're so successful. It, we can, we are capable of that stuff. Now, yes, there are those of us who don't apply ourselves. And there are people who are definitely disadvantaged and, and don't, um, they're disadvantaged and don't go to the right schools, you know, because their, their school district um, or their neighborhood school, whatever it is, is not the best school. I mean, that happens. But that also happens to white people, too. And I have worked with so many white people who have not um, learned, known how to speak properly. Um, you know, uh, saying stuff like, um, he don't do this or she don't do that. And I'm like, you know, it's, I don't understand why we get criticized for that stuff when there's plenty of them who, who do that too. Anyway. I guess my point is that we're not that much different. We are human beings too. And if given the chance, we can achieve just as much as any other human being can achieve. But we're automatically looked at as less than. And people automatically question us um, when, when we're in a, you know, when one of us gets a new higher position or something, um, an executive position I mean they're immediately questioned about you know it's it's a question whether or not they can do it and they're always looked at um, as you know can they do this are they gonna be successful and I'm tired of it I mean I don't and and I admit that part of it is our fault I mean you know we do sometimes um, we I guess we let ourselves fall into that I mean but you know it's just like a child uh, any child if you tell them constantly um, you're not any better than this or you're not going to go any further than this then um, the majority if you have a group of children and you're telling them all that the majority of those children are not going to go past that level but there are going to be some that fight that and go past that level and just like there's some of us um, that fight that but overall you know it's a surprise when we're successful it's a surprise um, it's a surprise that we were able to have a black president even though um, look at all the inventions and things that we've done look at this black CEOs I mean nothing there's nothing that we can't do so I'm just tired I'm tired of um, of us being looked at as less than. And then I'm tired of people denying that that happens. It clearly happens. If we if it didn't, we wouldn't have we wouldn't even be having any race discussion. But there's constantly going to be people who are saying, "Oh, well, um, you know, race it's it's just black people who are um they they want to be the victim and that's why um they're claiming that this is racist and all that stuff. It's not really racist." Well, you know what? Then you spend spend a, a week as a black person and you go around white people and get a job um, working with a bunch of white people and, and see what happens. And then we'll, I want to come back and ask you if you experience any racism. I guarantee you will see the world totally differently. I mean, I guess that's the point of this all. I mean, step into somebody else's shoes, especially somebody who... Um, does not have the same advantages that you have. 
So I don't know, I guess that's my two cents. Um, I just kind of wanted to um, just randomly talk about this stuff, I guess. Um, I think, I mean, obviously people keep talking about it because you know what, this hasn't stopped. It would be different if, if we weren't still experiencing these types of things, but we are. And um, so, I mean, I just wanted to kind of address it and get my feelings out on the subject. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, hope to hear her to see some positive comments. Thanks. And please read my blog.